Hi, I'm uh, Charlie Kemp. I'm the PI for the Georgia Tech effort uh, for the PR2 beta program. I'm excited to talk to you about what our plans are for the next two years. Uh, so as you can see by the title, our, our goal is assistive mobile manipulation for older adults at home. And I, I kind of want to give you some context for this by pointing to some of our, our previous work. Uh, we've actually done quite a bit of work in mobile manipulation for fetching objects. And in this case, this is a collaboration with the Emory ALS Center. And the person here has designated an object to be retrieved with a laser pointer. The robot has gone, picked up the object, and then the person has uh, illuminated herself to tell the robot to deliver the object. And the thing I really want you to pay attention to here is the expression on her face as she receives this object. Because this is something we take for granted, and yet, uh, if you watch, so I think that's a very sincere smile, and if you look, she actually thanks the robot. And that's really what we want. We want to be developing robots that people are actually going to be happy about and thanking them afterwards. Uh, this is so, sort of a culmination of some of our work in object fetching. It turns out for at least this particular uh, group of users, just picking up objects from the floor would be a huge thing for them. And so after identifying what's important, what are the important objects, what does this user population want? We've been able to make a very simple system that we're optimistic can be commercialized in the near term to deliver that capability. So this is actually an ongoing study. A uh, person here has ALS. And the only autonomy you're actually seeing is in the grasping. It's one button to go and grasp. It's after you're positioned approximately in front of the object. It's one button to go and grasp it. Uh, then you drive it to yourself, and it's one button to lift it up. And uh, so. You can see that smile. This is uh, probably the first time a lot of these people have been able to, in a long time, retrieve an object independently uh, on their own. And, and one more person. So, so that's, I mean, that's the, the big motivation. And specifically for this research, we'd like to figure out how can autonomous mobile manipulators be able to do the same thing for older adults. And moreover, you can imagine that if, if a simple robot like that, doing a simple task, can deliver that much value, what could be possible if we have these more general mobile manipulators providing more general assistive tasks? It seems like there's a great opportunity here. Uh, so I do want to take a step back and provide some broader context for this, other than just the smiles. And that's that really what's happening uh, and what we're focused on is that right now there are a large number of people, and you can see just even in the US alone, who require assistance that at this time can only be provided by biological systems. Uh, and, and as you see here, uh, in the US there are 30,000 people with ALS, which is a population we've been working with. One of the things we're excited about with respect to this proposal is that there's a much larger population in terms of older adults who could potentially benefit from this technology if we get things right. Uh, so this gives you some details on why robots might be competitive. Uh, you know, you have service dogs, helper monkeys, certified nursing assistants. Those are some of these biological systems which are very complex, these biological mobile manipulators that provide help right now. The problem is they're very costly. Uh, there are issues with in independence, and there can be long wait lists. So robots really do have the opportunity, I think, to, to revolutionize healthcare. A number of ways in which they can do this. One is the potential for extreme vigilance. You could imagine 24-7 care, which you just don't get anywhere except in an ICU these days. And, and also, you know, potential for consistent performance. One service dog is definitely not like another service dog. And finally, uh, I think privacy and independence. I've got that up there at the start because really, especially working with the patients we've worked with in terms of people with severe motor impairments, independence is a huge factor. And I think it it's really seems like the number one factor for the, for the people we've worked with. Of course, there are lots of ways that robot could, robots could help people in terms of healthcare. This shows you a few of the ways in which robots could help people. Uh, you know, why mobile manipulators? Uh, and, you know, there, there are a few factors, but I think these, these to me seem to be the biggest. One is that there's really the opportunity for the robot to do a task independently from the user. And then you have low workload for the user. They don't have to think much. They can focus on what they want to focus on instead of dealing with these, these other tasks. And especially for older adults, there's no need to, to put something on and take something off like you would with some other types of robotic devices. Uh, you, for older adults, uh, there have been problems even in terms of wearable technology that could really deliver on healthcare. You know, just adherence in terms of putting it on in the morning, taking it off at night, can be a problem. So this technology, I think, can, can get around that. 
And then the finally, more generally, which I think a lot of people here are hopeful about, you know, there's the opportunity to have these types of robots doing all sorts of things, which could greatly lower the cost of, of you know, delivering value to these types of uh, populations. So, so typically at this point, uh, my lab goes, OK, we have this need, we have this opportunity, now we need to build something. Uh, the great thing with the PR2 program is we don't have to build the robot. Uh, and that really opens up some things for us that we're excited about. We just have to program the robot. Uh, the types of questions we usually look at, which are, we'll be doing the same sort of thing here in collaboration with others, you know, what types of tasks would actually be valuable for older adults? Uh, how can we have those older adults command the robot to perform these tasks? And then finally, I think which is a, a lot of the interest in this room, how can we have robots robustly perform these tasks in real-world healthcare settings? So one of the things that is, the PR2 is going to enable us to do that we're excited about is we can actually collaborate. It's hard to collaborate when you have a custom robot you've built all by yourself that has its own quirks. Uh, you can't necessarily bring people on and expect them to get up to speed quickly enough to be able to use it and do useful things. And so this, this shows the collaborators on this proposal. Uh, I especially want to point out Wendy Rogers because she's actually in psychology and the Human Factors and Aging Lab. And they have uh, extensive experience working with older adults, studying technology for older adults, and, any, and even some uh, recent work in terms of human-robot interaction. So my lab, we've only worked with uh, people who have severe motor impairments. So have, being able to collaborate with Wendy's lab in a useful way, we're really excited about that. And uh, there are representatives here, Corey over there, Janace as a, here as a summer intern. Uh, we're also working with Jim Bray. Uh, he's an expert in machine vision and uh, learning. Andrea Tamaz, social robotics. Tracy Mitzner has over a decade of experience in terms of technology in older adults. And Brian Jones, who's the director of the Aware Home, which I'll, I'll mention in a moment. So what we've done is we've divided our, our program, our, our proposal, in terms of two thrusts. The first is a human-robot interaction thrust. And although I'm leading the overall project, uh, Wendy Rogers is actually leading this thrust. And, and as you can see, it really, it can, what we, our objectives are conform to sort of these, these issues and interesting things we've wanted to, the questions we've wanted to ask before. How can we identify the needs of older adults? We want to see how older adults can interact with the robot effectively. And then also, what factors in terms of this technology are going to be important in terms of older adults actually accepting it and using it? Uh, in terms of the software development thrust, which I'm leading, uh, we want to start out by porting software that we've developed in my lab for other mobile manipulators, which we think is going to be useful in a number of ways, not the least of which is for us to better identify what factors in terms of the specific robot are important to the success of our approaches so far. We're going to support the HRI thrust. That will probably require software. And then also, once we start to learn what the needs and opportunities are with older adults, actually try to develop new, new capabilities. And I'll, I'll talk a bit more about this later. So, so the schedule in terms of the structure, we've got two years, which are both of those years have a similar, uh, similar structure here. The robot's actually going to be in two locations, in my lab, and it's also going to spend time in the aware home. Uh, my lab, you can see here, it's pretty conventional. We do have a simulated living room and uh, a hospital room. Uh, but the aware home is not conventional. And what's nice is it's a, it's a real house. It's a freestanding structure on the Georgia Tech campus, and that's going to give us some advantages in terms of 